Hey everyone, in this video I'm showing you how to pasteurize your bulk substrate using the bucket tech method. So I'm going to walk you through the whole process. I'm going to explain what the bucket tech method is. I'm going to tell you why it's important to pasteurize your substrate, what pasteurization is, and then we're going to do the actual process. We're going to do the bucket tech method. I'll share with you the materials that you need and we'll go through it step by step together. So be sure to stay tuned for this whole video. And at the end, you will see how we have Coco Coir fully pasteurized and ready to go to the next step, which would be spawning to bulk. So this is an important part of mush mushroom pasteurization. Whether you're growing medicinal or gourmet mushrooms, you're gonna need to either sterilize or pasteurize your bulk substrate. We're growing medicinal mushrooms here, which we need coco coir for. And coco coir is fairly inert on its own, so we don't need to sterilize this, which involves um, basically uh, heating this up in a, st in a pressure cooker to a very high temperature for a certain period of time. So we don't need to go to those lengths, thankfully. Here we're just doing pasteurization. And so what is pasteurization? It's basically heating up your substrate to the point where we're killing off any unwanted microorganisms. Uh, things like bacteria, other fungi that can compete with our mushrooms. We want to get rid of those. So why do we do it? What happens if we don't pasteurize our coco coir? We're going to get contamination. That's what we're uh, fighting against here in mycology. We don't want any contamination. We don't want mold. We don't want trike. Uh, we don't want any of those things. Uh, we could list a hundred different contams you can get. We don't want any of them. So it's very important that you pasteurize your coco coir. It's important if you're cooking other mushrooms on things like sawdust, uh, you need to sterilize that. Otherwise you're going to get contamination. All right, so what is bucket tech? Basically what we're doing, we're taking our coco coir here, we're mixing it with boiling water in a bucket, we're letting it sit until it's cool, then we'll drain off the excess water, get it to field capacity, which we'll talk about in here in a few minutes, and then uh, we'll have coco coir, like I said earlier on, that's ready to go on to the next stage of mushroom cultivation, which is a spawn to bulk stage. I have another video on spawning to bulk, so be sure to check that out after you finish the bucket tech, because you'll be ready for the next step after doing the bucket tech here. So let's talk about the materials that you need. First and foremost, you need coco coir. You're going to need a bucket, and then you're going to need boiling water. I use a kettle, you can use a big pot, but we're gonna need, if you have a brick of coco coir, this is the equivalent of a brick of coco coir, 650 grams of cocoa. This is loose coco coir. I buy it loose in a bag because it's so much easier to prepare. It's a little more expensive. I never did this in the past. I always got bricks and hydrated them myself. And then I bought a loose bag one time and I'm like, oh my God, this is easy. This is nice. Look at, you get nice, loose airy coco coir no clumps or anything like that makes it really easy to prep so once you get it it's hard to go back so beware of that but um for those that are using bricks you're going to need to rehydrate it and then drain off the excess moisture before you do the bucket tech um, you can put it right in your bucket when you're done and just add your water uh, for our purposes here i measured out 650 grams of water or i'm sorry 650 grams of coco coir and for water, we're going to need 3.5 quarts. Or that's the equivalent of 14 cups of water. So from here, I'd say a couple things about the Coco Coir. There are a lot of brands you can use. You can see I have this loose bag of Eco Earth here. This is a really trusted brand. I've been using it for years. It always works well. You can get it in your local pet shop. You can buy it online. Um, you can buy bricks of this or loose bags of it like I have here. But Zoomed uh, Eco Earth is a great brand. So that's why I have that here. Other brands, um, you know, are known to work, but I just like to work with uh, something that's affordable and something that uh, I know is gonna work for me. Lastly, you're gonna need a spoon or some way to mix this together. If you have a brick, you're gonna have to break it up somehow. I always just used a big knife and chopped it up. Uh, make sure it's broken up into fine pieces. We wanna break up any clumps, like here is a clump. So I would just break that up with my fingers because that's not gonna colonize once we get to uh, the spawn to bulk phase. Mycelium's gonna grow all over this coco coir. And if there are big clumps, it's not gonna be able to feed through that. So let's get going here. Bucket tech, like I said, is basically just mixing our ingredients together, letting it heat up uh, the coco coir, letting it sit till it's cool, 
and then draining it off and then we'll be ready for the next step. So it's pretty easy, right? Uh, there's no, no um, rocket science here. I say that a lot. It's a pretty easy process. Um, you just have to make sure you do it before you go on to the next stage of mushroom cultivation. So I already have um, two and a half quarts of boiling water in my bucket that I just poured in before I started this video. I'm gonna measure out one more quart here. Now I recommend, you know, if you can, I'm just not in a place where I can get a big boiling pot of water and bring it in. So I use a kettle, but if you can use, um, a big boiling pot of water and measure it out in advance, that's, that's ideal. Um, so this is going to put me at my 3.5 quarts. Now all I got to do is add my coir and mix it up. Perfect. We'll put our lid on it once we mix it. I also want to say I got this recipe from one of the uh, one of the legends in growing mushrooms, Philly Golden Teacher. Uh, so this was his recipe actually, and I was hoping that you know some people told me that uh, his recipe would get me to a perfect field compass field capacity. Um, <laughs> I can tell you right now it's not. This is so soupy, way soupier than I would have done on my own. And so what that means is I'm going to have to go through there and squeeze out all that excess liquid, which I don't want to do. Um, I think what I'm going to do here actually is add some more coir and hopefully it'll balance it out. I'll try to find the right ratios for you. If you know them, let me know. It doesn't matter too much because in the end we're squeezing out all the excess moisture, but it is a pain in the butt if you've got a ton of water in there to have to go through and squeeze it all out. So I'd say, I usually just, whoops, I usually just eyeball it and I will just kind of uh, put in a little extra water to where it's a, a little a little moist it's dripping but not sopping like this is a i added more coir and it's still just a mess so I, I got this off of one of philly golden teachers videos maybe i got the uh ratios wrong but i could have swore it was one brick which maybe it's not 650 grams maybe it was something different um of coir to your 3.5 quarts of water Another suspicion I have here is maybe it's because I'm using this loose coir. Uh, it's not as packed as tightly, but still you'd think 650 grams is 650 grams, right? So, so now you're thinking, well, God, you're going to have a boatload of cocoa coir here that's pasteurized. And you're right, I will. And that's okay because the nice thing about this cocoa coir, I can either use it up and spawn a lot of uh, mushrooms with it or i can do something different i can just keep adding hot water to this i can redo the bucket tech basically um, anytime i need more coir so i'll use the coir that i need today and then next time i need more coir i'll just redo the bucket tech right in here i've done that in the past it's worked really well for me all right, so now I've got more coir in here that's incorporated at a better level. Sorry, I don't have the ratios for you guys, but just kind of eyeball it. I get it to the point usually where everything's wet and I can pick some up. And this is kind of hard to do because it's boiling hot, but, and it leaks out like that. Ouch. That's still even a little much, but I'm going to go with it because I have so much coir here and it'll be a good demonstration when we get to field capacity here next. So what we're gonna do is put the lid on this for at least two to three hours until it cools down, until we can start handling it. And then we're gonna start squeezing this out to get it to field capacity. And I'll tell you about field capacity when we come back, but basically it's just getting the right moisture content in your coir. So we've gotta do that and then we'll be all ready to go. So this is the beginning of the bucket tech for mushroom cultivation. Again, we just take our coir 
either a brick or loose coco coir. We mix it with boiling water in a bucket. We put the lid on it for two to three hours or at least until it's cool. Next step is going to be squeezing out the moisture and getting it to the right field capacity, which we'll talk about in detail here in a few minutes. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll be back in just a couple minutes to finish out this bucket tech. All right, it's all done. Our coco coir, coco coir, tomato, tomato. Coco coir uh, has been pasteurizing for three hours. It's cooled down, and now we're ready for the next step, which is removing the excess moisture from our substrate. Now, whenever you're doing this process, you need to get your substrate to what's called field capacity. And that's basically the perfect moisture content for your substrate and for your mushrooms, ultimately. It's enough water to eventually feed your mushrooms, but not so much water that it's going to lead to contamination. It's kind of like the Goldilocks rule here. Um, not too hot, not too cold. You want it to be just right. And so finding that balance is kind of tricky. So I'm going to help you uh, determine um, field capacity here as we're draining this coco co coir. I'm going to change how I say it here mid-video. I, I mix myself up. I go, I, I usually say coco coir. I know some say coco coir. All right, let's get into this. Uh, first, here's my setup. Here's my bucket that has my coir. I have two bins. One is going to be for uh, draining into. I'm going to squeeze the excess water into here. And then the coir that's ready at field capacity, I'm going to store into here. And then I'm going to move on to spawning uh, to bulk. I'm going to spawn some colonized popcorn grain to this cocoa coir that is now pasteurized. So let's get to it. All right, so you'll see here, I added, I had the ratios wrong. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'll try to find the right ratios. Some have shared with me on my other channel, the right ratios. I should have looked that up. I thought I found one by Philly Golden Teacher that from his video that would work, but it was way too much water. So I added more coir, um, but you'll see it, it looks fairly dry, right? But if you take it and you give it a good squeeze, you'll see what happens here. This stuff is very absorbent. There's a ton of water left in there. So what we want to do is squeeze out that excess water. Here's how I do it. I get a good handful, put it over my bin, I kind of use both hands. And you will lose, you know, I dropped a little bit of coir in there, you don't want to do that. but. You want to get it to where if you're squeezing it your hardest, it just drips a couple drops. This might even be a little too much, but you can see that it, there's still moisture in it. I can hear the water in there. And if I give it a good squeeze, I can still drip some water out, but not a lot. So that's field capacity. Now, if you look at it, you can see it has a much different consistency. It is a, a different color even. It's not as dark. Coir changes color pretty quickly when it's dry. And it's much looser and more air, airy. Airier. All right, so basically you just keep on going with this until you have enough coir for what your, what your needs are. I'll be honest, this is my least favorite part of the whole cultivation process from inoculation all the way to fruiting. Sterilizing or pasteurizing your substrate is just not my favorite. Although, you know, it's not, it's not as bad. Sawdust I find to be pretty easy. You don't have to, you, I have a good recipe that gets it to perfect field capacity, so I don't have to do any of this. I haven't found that yet for coir. Let me know if you have a perfect recipe where I don't have to squeeze out the excess moisture because this is my least favorite part here. So I'm only doing one bin, but I'm using two 32 ounce jars, two quart size jars, and I want to do a one to one ratio. So I need two 32 ounce jars full. 64 ounces of coco coir. 
No, technically, that's not how it works because um, cocoa coir is much lighter than the spawn. So we're not really judging it by weight, but rather by volume. So they'll each take up, when we put them in their final destination, they will each take up about the same amount of room. What's gonna happen next, we're gonna let this, we're gonna mix this all up with some grain spawn that's colonized with mycelium. Then we let that colonize for about two weeks. And what'll happen is the grain spawn will kind of overtake the, the cocoa core. <laughs> Now I'm mixing it up. Now I'm mixing the two, quar and coir, quar. But anyways, mycelium is going to overtake the quar. They're going to join together and form one big substrate cake. And then mushrooms will grow off of that eventually. And you can do this whole process in about 30 days. I've done it, my, my best record from inoculation to, to harvesting fruits is 30 days, one month. I've never been able to do that before, and that was actually my first run. I was very eager and very determined. I had a deadline. <laughs> I wanted to uh, share my mushrooms with my brother, and I got them done. But anyways, you, you can grow mushrooms very quickly following my uh, cultivation videos whether you're growing gourmet or medicinal mushrooms. Um, if you follow my instructional videos here, you're gonna be growing mushrooms in no time. All right, I have just about what I need. So I'm gonna recap my bucket tech and how to pasteurize cocoa coir in a bucket. So remember, you don't have to sterilize coir. If you have time to do it, it's, uh, it's not a bad idea. You don't have to do it in a pressure cooker though. You can do it in a bucket with boiling water. So what you do is you prepare your substrate, you measure out what you need. You, <laughs> don't follow my recipe, um, but uh, get enough coir out, put it in a bucket, measure out your water, boil that water, and then pour it in, mix it with the coir, put a lid on it, let it sit, let it pasteurize for at least two to three hours until it cools down. Then you're gonna drain it like I did. You're gonna squeeze out all the excess moisture and get this cocoa coir to field capacity. And then we're all done with the bucket tech. We're all done with pasteurizing our substrate. Next thing we're gonna do is move on to the spawn to bulk phase, which is where we take our colonized grain and we mix it with our pasteurized uh, coir, our pasteurized substrate. So I already have a video out on that. Be sure to check out that video. It's the next step of mushroom cultivation. From there, we will let this colonize for 14 days, like I said. Then we will move it into fruiting conditions. And then we'll have mushrooms about a week later. So we're getting closer, you guys. I'll show you real quick for those that stuck around. Here's what's going to be mixed into the coir. And oh, check this out. I don't know that I've ever had this happen before, but there's a mushroom that has grown it's more than just a pin, that's a little mushroom. That's grown inside the jar. These babies are ready. They're saying, <laughs> saying, spawn me, spawn me. So I'm gonna mix this with the coir, let it colonize. We're gonna have mushrooms in no time. This was my bucket tech. This is how you pasteurize coir. Thank you, much, thank you so much for following along. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them for me below. If you have any recommendations or feedback for me, please leave it. I love hearing all sorts of feedback I, and I wanna use it to improve my videos. So I'm open to anything. Please leave me feedback, leave me comments. I try to get back to all my commenters and all my viewers right away. So please leave me your comments. Thank you guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If it was helpful, give it a thumbs up. And just as importantly, if you're liking my content so far and you want to continue to learn the tips and tricks of mushroom cultivation so you can grow your own mushrooms, be sure to subscribe so you, you can stay tuned to my new videos that I'll be putting out. We'll be uh, updating you on this mushroom grow. We're going to be spawning it to bulk. Then we're going to be growing mushrooms off of it. So I'll be keeping you posted on that. So be sure to su subscribe. Be sure to stick around. Thanks so much, guys. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a good one.